now we have completed the modeling now we'll move on to the load applications I'll go to load tab so static loads first I'll apply so the static load cases I'll define now I'll click on static load cases I'll give the name as SW for self aid so here you have list of uh, different loads so I'll be selecting the type of load as construction stage load as my self aid would be coming up in the construction stage so I'll select construction stage load give the description as self aid click add this would be my varying codes even this would be coming in the construction stages so the type should be construction stage load click add crash barrier load paste it here just give some description I'll click add wet concrete load of the dex lab so as we will be simulating the composite action in the construction stages so there we need this wet concrete load of the dex lab so I have defined the static load case name now pre-stress load Stress, I'll add it's the breaking load. So I'll select breaking load type. Click add. So as this would be coming after the construction stages, so after the more bridge is completed then the braking and the moving loads would be coming so that's why the type is braking load next the wind forces longitudinal paste it will give some descriptions to differentiate between the loads click add similarly in the transverse direction define water current load that would be acting on my substructure so give this as wave pressure next log impact click add I'll give temperature loads temperature rise select temperature so this would be my temperature uniform click add similarly temperature fall load and positive temperature gradients so I'll add temperature gradient load similarly I'll add negative temperature gradient click add click close so uh, we are done with the static load definitions just the naming now we'll apply the magnitude so these are all the static load cases so let me start applying the self aid first I'll click on self aid I'll select the relevant load group I'll give minus one click add so the sulfate would be taken up for the whole model 
automatically the close next I'll define the crash barrier load so you have beam loads so as these are beam elements I'll click on element load so I'll select crash barrier and the load group as crash barrier load uh, this would be a uniform load you have different type of loads so I'll select uniform loads for my crash barrier select the direction of the load as global Z and the value is minus 2.5 kilonewton meter be careful with the units I'll select the crash barriers so I'll go to works tab go to sections select the crash barriers click apply so you can right click on the crash barrier load display so this would be my load minus 2.5 kilonewton per meter on the crash barriers click close I'll undisplay this now I'll apply the SIDL load go to element load select the load case and the relevant uh, load group global Z direction give the value as minus 5.175 kilonewton per meter so this would be applied on the girders so I'll go to groups so you can quickly select the girders from the section click apply now I'll assign the wet concrete load change the load case to wet concrete and the wet concrete span 1 give the value as minus 18.8 km per meter for span 1 go to group I'll select only the span 1 girders then click apply similarly I'll change the load group to wet concrete span 2 and select the span 2 girders and click apply you can see from here the static load cases so the wet concrete if you display this would be my wet concrete load but internally it is uh, grouped under wet concrete span 1 and span 2 load groups but the load case remains the same as wet concrete load run display click close